So when you buy a new Porsche, you kind of expect it to hold its value well, I guess, like a new Porsche, right? But that isn't always the case. There are some models in the lineup that take their unfair share of that depreciation. I think two models for me that spring to mind initially are the Panamera and the KN, which definitely do get hurt by the long arm of depreciation. And then of course, there's other models out there that really do buck the trend. For example, the 911 is pretty bulletproof and the special edition versions, the GT models, seem to hold their value even more. Uh, so it really is a great investment if you can get your hands on one of those. <laughs> Looking at the GT4 now, I think that is a very sound buy. They've just closed the order books on the 718, so if anything, it's gonna stay stable or appreciate in value as a platform, potentially, as people scrabble to get their hands on one before we are hit by the EV version of that platform, which gets the enthusiasts a little bit riled up, to say the least. Another weird one for you is the 911 GT2 RS actually suffers from some of the worst appreciation out there. I hear you ask why. Well, on paper it does, and that is because these cars are obviously prime target for being flipped. The same thing with the GT4 RS. I'm sure when we see depreciation figures for that, it's not going to look good. And of course, that is because people get hold of them, they flip them for massively way over list, and then, of course, the buyer after that might take a little bit of a hit on their part, which therefore creates that artificial depreciation that you see somewhere about 30%. Now, Porsche are a very profitable company. I think it's around six billion they turned in 22 in, in operating profit in pounds, maybe a bit more in euros. So hugely profitable and they are going to increase prices even further when the new EV platforms drop, you know, the McCann and the K and the uh, Cayman the 718 platform. So yeah, we're going to see a big uptick in prices. It's not the most profitable company. Ferrari are the most profitable out there, I believe. So if you're buying one of those, you're giving a lot of money into that profitability stakes. No escaping that to get your hands on one of these. But when you have a Taycan, right now things might not be so rosy. So let's dig into the data a little bit. Let's look at what might be going on here. So if you look at Auto Trader in the UK, there are 600 or so for sale. That's quite a few. And when you look at the most expensive one, 190,000 GBP for a Turismo, which is insane money. So you still have to pay quite a lot to get your hands on one. So that can't be bad, right? The cheapest is 65K for a 4S pretty good I think. So why are you hearing that Taycans might be taking a huge hit on depreciation right now? I also had a look at the States. The States is about 800 to 1000 for sale. It's harder to pinpoint because there's a few more sites to consider there. But the, the price is pretty similar from a GBP to USD conversion so pretty similar, unlike other marks out there which are a lot more expensive in, in America, for example. So, good, you might say. Well, Taycans aren't really losing value. Well, if you take your Taycan down to uh, a dealer, an official Porsche dealer, an official Porsche center, and ask him, what is my Taycan worth to you right now? You might be a little bit shocked. And some of the quotes that people have had through are very, very low indeed. And some of the more well-known used car buying facilities out there will also give you a pretty scary quote. The higher up the model mark you go, uh, you know, Turbo S, all up to Turbo S, the more likely you are 
to be affected by the depreciation. So what is going on? I do hear that some people have sort of quoted figures of around about uh, five to ten thousand pounds a month depreciation since they got it given what they're offered now from those centers so what is going on why is this the case well the unfortunate reality is is simply oversupply into the used pool at the moment oversupply is really hampering the prices dealers just simply don't want the stock because they're left sitting around for quite a while before they sell at least that seems to be case so what exactly is the reason behind this why is there this increasing saturation of the used carpool for Taycans well you've got to look at the way Taycans are purchased now 90% of Taycans are bought through businesses 90% that is a huge number why is that? Well, the benefit in kind is only 1%, instant no-brainer. Also, there is a scheme being run by the government at the moment where if you buy, as of 2021, a new zero, zero grams per kilometre car, i.e. a fully battery electric vehicle, you're entitled to offset 100% of the cost of that car against your capital expenditure for that year which is very high. If you're looking at an £80,000 car, you can offset that against your profit and pay less in corporation tax. Absolute no-brainer. So you can save through tax a huge sum of money on a brand new electric vehicle. And that is why 90% of them are procured through businesses. That 100% that you can offset, when you look at the next level down, which is just a standard car or a car your average car or a car that is 50 grams of, of uh, CO2 or less per kilometer has to, to qualify that it's 18 percent which is a huge step down from what you get if it's a full battery electric vehicle so I mean that alone is one of the reasons why 90 percent are procured through businesses but here is the problem that only applies to new vehicles it has to be a new vehicle so if you're a business and you're looking at a used car you're only going to get 18% of the cost of that car against your uh, capital expenditure for that year, which, which is a big difference. So that's why use just doesn't cut it. People want new to use these schemes and get that cheaper method of acquisition for them. So I'm one of the 10% that has their Taycan on a personal purchase. <laughs> It's a PCP, so I'm not too fussed about the depreciation, although it would be nice to get to the end of the lease uh, or during the lease and still be able to get out of this potentially with some money left in the tank. But the way things are going, I don't see that being the case right now. So, yes indeed, that is one of the reasons why we're seeing this glut in the market for used Taycans right now. A lot of them out there. What other factors might be at play here? Well, Tesla, the benchmark really for EVs have reduced their prices, putting further downward pressure on the used car pool, lowering prices there. And also, I, part of me thinks that people are still a little bit skeptical about getting into a used battery electric vehicle for fear that the batteries might suffer from deplete, uh, depletion. You know, that battery pack depletion is something that is spoken about a lot. But we are seeing, or I'm seeing, or I'm reading about uh, some analysis that's been done and a lot of people saying that it isn't quite as bad as you first think. EVs holding on to that battery level for a lot longer than manufacturers initially assumed or thought they might. So don't let that get in the way for you here. Uh, you might be in a pretty good shape if you get your hands on a battery electric vehicle. So I just wanted to uh, call that out on this video. and give you my thoughts as to why I think battery vehicles, or Taycans more specifically, are currently suffering from this poor level of offer when you want to get out of them. So, not an ideal situation and it might change. Who knows if there's further supply issues that compound the ability to get your hands on one. Could be another issue as well. So, just wanted to discuss that in this video. That's it for this one. Do take care. Stay safe. Stay well.
bye for now see you on the next one